What's going on everybody? Nazdarachi back again. And what I was going to do in this episode is the banner review for the Phase 4 of the second anniversary draw. Now, I want to do this one first because it is a more time sensitive draw than the Final Fantasy IX banner, but I will get to that. As well, I hope all y'all saw my other video for the contest I posted. It is a nice little guessing game for a free $25 Google Play gift card. Or if you're in another foreign country or something like that and can't use Google Play, I can get a visa as well. So check out that video and sub the channel if you haven't already just for that. So hopefully you can win some nice stuff. And let's check out this relic banner here. So as we move on to the banner here, it is good to note that the Orb Fest phase has moved forward. So we are now on a fresh set of Orb Fest dungeons, so be sure to check those out as well as they release the next pre-phase of the Nemesis boss fight. So check that out to increase your synergy against the Nemesis boss there. But now that we're here, let's check out this Phase 4 banner here. Now your first item is yet another Ragnarok sword. It is an Overstrike Soul Break for Agrarius here. 169 attack, so it's on par with other top tier OSB swords as well as it adds two bonus effects, one constant boost to holy damage that is small, always in effect, and as well a synergy bonus of a small chance to interrupt. Now, the synergy bonus is just an added benefit, but the fact that this does have two bonus effects on it makes it a notably good piece of equipment here. The Overstrike Holy Blade deal massive physical holy and non-elemental damage to one target, deals more damage to targets vulnerable or with a slight weakness to holy, can break the damage cap. In your average situation, this is just going to be an average overstrike soul break, but in a situation obviously where your opponent is vulnerable or weak to holy slightly, this is going to be an above average soul break. So all in all, it is not a bad sword to have. Because of the bonus effects, it's actually a pretty good overstrike soul break to get, but probably not the best item on this particular banner here. Now your chance to draw it is about 0.79%. Next up, we have the Durandal. It's a sword for Ash, 120 attack and 162 magic, so pretty interesting and not terrible split on the stats there. You only have a synergy dependent bonus effect, which is a small boost to lightning damage, so not terrible, but not ideal. Your Overstrike Soul Break, Thunder's Echo, deal massive magic lightning and non elemental damage to one target, can break the damage cap. This is just going to be a very standard magic based overstrike soul break. So in situations where you're packing lightning, this is going to be a good finishing move. Other than that, nothing really noteworthy here, except for the split stats. So this is going to favor a mage that can also do a little bit of physical damage as well. Pretty interesting item actually, not a bad sword to have, but in terms of overstrikes, it is average. And your chance to draw this is about 0.79% as well. Next up, we have the Saintly Excalibur. This is another above average Overstrike Soul Break here. 168 attacks, or only sacrificing one attack compared to other swords. But you do have the constant boost to holy damage. And as well, you have the synergy bonus of the small chance to instantly KO, which is pretty much irrelevant. Your Overstrike Soul Break Thunder God, deal massive physical holy and lightning damage to one target, and grant the user Thunder God's might, temporarily reducing the delay of the user's actions. Now the Overstrike as well triggers after a long delay, and it can break the damage cap. Like I said earlier, it is above average Overstrike, mostly because of the Thunder God's might that it grants you. It does take a little bit extra time to roll this out, but you can compensate for that with a Stega, as well as using other moves that might reduce the cast time of your party's offensive maneuvers. So overall, with the bonus effect, and as well a very versatile overstrike, this is a good sword to have, and Orlando is a very exceptional Spellblade character. Definitely something you would want to draw on this banner if you don't have it already and you have a pretty decent 1.98% chance to pull it. 
I already have that sword. I can say from experience that it is a very nice overstrike soul break to have. So next up we have the burst soul break Excalibur for Agrarius. Small boost to holy damage, it's always in effect with 131 attack. Burst soul break, divine ruination, deal 4 range physical holy attacks to all targets, temporarily lower their holy resistance, and grant haste and burst mode to the user. Burst Ability Devotion's Blade, deal two physical holy attacks to one target, raise the defense a very large amount, and temporarily redirect single target physical and black magic attacks to the user. And Faith's Blade, deal two physical holy attacks to one target, and temporarily raise the user's resistance a moderate amount. The Burst Soul Break by itself is not insane, but it would stack very nicely on a holy themed team but when you combo the Burst Soul Break with these Burst Abilities right here, that basically set her up to draw fire here, as well as raising her stats quite significantly, she becomes a very tanky character. So, especially in Final Fantasy Tactics realms, but even outside of them, this can be a great addition to your team. As well, it complements certain multiplayer raid dungeons quite nicely also. All in all, this is a very good burst soul break to have, especially if you're in a situation where you want to pack extra holy damage, but even still, she is a reasonably good tank character, so you wouldn't mind having this one if you don't already have it, and it seems like your chance to draw it is about 1.59%. Next up, we have the Hamlin for Eco. This is a very highly sought after burst soul break. Attack 81, magic 105, mine 123, no bonus effects. It's not really a stat stick, but your burst soul break here restore a large amount of HP to all allies, raise their critical hit chance a large amount, and grant haste and burst mode to the user is a very good burst soul break to have. It's a heal and a good offensive buff as well. Your burst command restore a very large amount of HP to one ally and um, enable them one physical blink and then Wayfarer's him restore a small amount of HP to all allies it's a very common medica effect on the second burst command there a lot of people really like this one it's very popular Eco is a very proficient healer in this game so another item that is quite powerful if you don't already have it and it seems like you have about a 1.59% chance to pull it so moving on here, we have a book for Alpha Na. It is the Veil of Wii U, 55 attack, 128 magic, 105 mind, and a very useful minor resistance to silence. You definitely won't mind having that. First Soul Break Aerial Blast, deal 8 summon magic wind and non-elemental attacks to one target. Temporarily infuse the user with the power of wind and grant haste and burst mode to the user. First Commands Wind Blade, deal 4 summon magic wind and non-elemental attacks to one target and remove the delay from the user's next action. And Etherflow, deal two summon magic wind and non-elemental attacks to one target, and restore one ability use to the user's ability with the fewest remaining uses. So this burst command two is very much similar to Kane's burst command two. It allows you to bring Alpha Naw into battle with very powerful summon abilities that are low hones and still be functional with them. And the burst command one here is a very good DPS burst command with the reduction of delay and four attacks, especially if you're in a situation where you're teamed up with maybe Zack and Cloud for wind damage, or perhaps an all magic team, this will really shine and he's capable of doing tons of damage. Uh, most notably, if you faith go him and buff his stats here a little bit and then equip him with the Tiamat summon and you get his stats high enough, he can pump out some major damage with those hits from Tiamat. This item is an exceptional burst soul break, and this is a very good summon and magic wielding character to have on your side here. I would actually love to draw this item and add him to my wind based team, and your percent chance to draw this book is about 1.59%, so cross your fingers that this is one of the items that I get, because I could really use a powerful summoning character along with Braska and Yuna. Moving on, speak of the devil here, Yuna, you know, we have the Chaos Rod, 55 attack, 100 magic, 130 mind, no bonus effects, Miracle Veil, restore a large amount of HP to all allies, and give them HP stock of 2k additional HP. This is another good move to complement Yuna. For synergy, it's great. For healing, it's great. And the only thing it's missing would be like an instant cast that would make it any better. But even still, this is a very good item. 
I have one of her burst soul breaks, so I wouldn't mind getting this as well to complement that, just in case, you know, situation depends. For the plus 10 mastery points and the HP stock with a large Kuraga to the whole team, this is not a bad item to have right here. It is about 2.78% chance to pull this relic on your draws. Next, we have a super soul break here for Ramza. 26 attack, 18 magic, 95 defense, 91 resistance, and 19 mind. It is chant, temporarily raise the critical hit damage of all allies and grant them a barrier that negates attack damage up to 30% of their max HP. I'm not necessarily sure that you'd want to be using this one instead of shout really at all. I'm, I'm mixed feelings. Like, this is definitely a good effect to have, but Shout is better. This is offensive at the same time, but it's lacking the Haystega, and it's lacking the actual damage output increase. Now, if they happen to crit, it's going to raise that damage, but it doesn't actually raise the probability of them landing a critical hit. So all in all, you would prefer to have Shao on your side, but this is not bad. If you don't have Shao, maybe you have his Burst Soul Break and this, it's still going to be pretty functional. But again, like I said, you would rather have Shao as an effect and have him pumping that out as opposed to the uh, Chant right here. Your chance to pull these Bracers is about 2.78%. And another move for Alpha Noah here, we have 0 attack, 17 magic, 90 defense, and 137 resistance, and 17 mind, no bonus effects. Deployment tactics is another really good super soul break, temporarily raise the attack and magic of all allies a moderate amount, so very similar to Onion Knight's buff, but albeit not a burst soul break. And as well, you instead of getting Haystega, you get the damage barrier that reflects damage back at the attacker. The utilitarian functionality of this item is very, very high. It is definitely a good soul break to have to complement all the defensive and obviously as well offensive buffs on your team. You will be able to sub in Alpha Nod instead of Onion Knight if you're in a situation that you'd much rather have his wind or summoning based DPS and still have a buff that is very similar to sacrificing the Onion Knight buff, but they will not stack together, obviously, so there's no point in really running this and the Onion Knight burst soul break. Again, the Haystega effect makes Onion Knight's burst soul break a little bit more useful in its own right but you cannot crap on the use of this damage reflecting barrier. It has definitely won boss fights for me before when I've roaming warriored this. Ideally for me on this draw, if I pull this and Alphanod's book, I'd be having a field day. That would be great for me. The rest of the items I could use as well, but those are the two that I'm really looking at the most here, mainly the book also. But your percent chance to draw this armor is about 1.98%. And we have a staff for the Onion Knight here, Eternal Staff, 55 attack, 127 magic, 105 mind, minor resistance to silence. Defensively speaking, that is a very decent bonus effect to have on your side. Your Super Soul Break Blowback, deal 5 magic non-elemental attacks to all targets and restore a moderate amount of HP to all allies based on their max HP. So it's a hybrid AoE damage and heal which is not what you're going to want to be casting over his Burst Soul Break or even potentially his Overstrike Soul Break if you're trying to finish out a fight. But I guess if your healer is being overloaded and you absolutely need this, I don't know. It definitely has functionality in its own right, but again, it's not what you'd want over his Burst Soul Break. Unless, of course, maybe you're running with Deployment Tactics and then you have the option to use this as a secondary heal. So. Again, every item has its use, just some are a little bit less useful. Again, though, it does complement Onion Knight's ability to run either physical or magic, and as well, non-elemental damage. He excels at dealing, so in situations where you're totally screwed with enemies that resist everything or lots of things, this has a small role that it can fill. Your chance to pull is about 2.38%. And that's all the items on the banner, so let's start out with a 100 gem draw, and I'm going to burn my last 50 pull that I have currently on this banner as well. Hopefully I get something good. Alrighty, so our 100 gem draw has been done here. Who knows what we might get, maybe something, maybe nothing. Eh, it doesn't seem like anything. Good old 3 star. Oh, how I love you so.
But anyway, let's uh, let's do an 11 pull and see if we can't get something reasonable. Crossing my fingers for that book, but probably not what I'll get. You never know, though. You never know. Alrighty. Moment of truth here. Oh, we got a 4 out of 11 with the fucking disco ball. That is nice. I just, I don't really want Saintly Excalibur because I already have it. So cross your fingers, that's not what it is. But even if it is, I will take it for fusion purposes. So the moment of truth here, our 4 out of 11. Boom, we got the staff for Onion Knight. Um, I'll take it, I'm not going to complain. Oh god, we got Alphanod's book. I'm so happy right now, you guys. I'm so happy. Ooh, we got the BSB for Agrarius as well. And the Overstrike for Agrarius. Wow, this pull could not have gone any better for me, you guys. I mean, except if I had gotten Deployment Tactics instead of Onion Knight's staff. Holy crap, I'm not going to shit on this draw. This was my last pull for the Anniversary Banners, unless I can grind out another 37 Mithril real quick. Good stuff, good stuff. We had a, we had a lucky pull here. Anyway, you guys, I hope your draws were just as lucky, if not better, than mine here. We made out with some pretty good relic gear here, and I'm definitely not going to crap on my luck here. I had some, some bad luck leading up to it, all, all for this. These are some of the items I wanted here. I hope you guys enjoyed this relic review, and as always, stick with the channel, and we'll have more episodes coming out all the time here. About at least two a week, maybe more. I'm also going to try and start live streaming. But for the rest of the evening, I hope you guys have a good one. And this is Nazdarachi. I'll catch you next time. Later, you guys. Um.